Welcome to KMD Information Session Online. The next 60 minutes or so, uh, we would like to um, walk you through the very unique features of KMD and also highlighting one of our real projects called Embodied Media. While you're listening um, the session, if you have any questions to us, uh, please type it in and it will appear on my screen. At the end of the, um, the session, there'll be a Q&A section. I will read out your uh, question and answer. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I have uh, one professor and two students on board. So if um, all of you can put your video on and your mic on, that'll be great. Thank you. Hey. Great, hi. Okay, so here we go. Um, this information session assumes that you have already watched my overview video that's pre-recorded. But just in case you haven't, uh, I'll give you a super quick introduction to KMD. So KMD is a place for creativity and innovation, especially during this COVID-19. And we are seeing, looking at uh, designing a new uh, normal that people say, or the, a better future. So it requires very different way of thinking to redesign things rather than extending what we've been doing as an incremental innovation. We want a very radical um, view of changing the world ups upside down almost. And this requires lots of creative thinking, imagination and doing. It's not just talking, but doing. So KMD is therefore about creativity and innovation. We are having a very unique community that's very diverse in terms of culture. Um, students come from very different disciplines and we have a very wide age group diversity as well. Um, so based on each individual difference, we try to put together the difference and collaborate together to make a much better future. That's going to be part of us in say 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. So let's get started. Um, Minamizawa Sensei is on board. Um, thank you for joining. Um, what would you say to the audience about the feature unique part of KMD as I already explained a bit, but maybe your view might be appreciated as well. Yes, yeah, so the, and uh, yeah, nice to meet you all. So the, I'm Kota Minamizawa, our professor at KMD and uh, organizing embodiment project. So actually my background was the more like a computer science or engineering kind of things. But uh, after I, I was joined KMD 10 years before, then I found that, so oh, this is very kind of the crazy place that, yeah, that's, the various people here, so there's designers, uh, creators are uh, doing, making something that it, uh, I cannot understand. And uh, there's some kind of a more like a policy, policy student doing a more like a very uh, big kind of a organizing big events. And uh, that initially that didn't look like a research, but uh, after, after several kind of months, I found that, oh, this is also the research to create this kind of the new activity in the society. So then now, so we are doing a lot of projects that collaborating with this kind of a different kind of aspects. That is, I think, something that we cannot do in the kind of a conventional kind type of the universities, but the very unique activities that KMD can do. Thank you. Yeah, I like the word crazy. <laughs> <laughs> sense. So um, let me ask uh, two students um, your view about KMD. Um, so maybe we're starting from Elizabeth. Um, so for me, I think KMD is somewhere that you can explore your infinity because as Minamizawa Sensei just said that we have so many uh, individuals coming from different backgrounds. So like um, they know a lot of things that you didn't know before. And then like when we all sit together, then we can like just share like all of our di different perspectives. And then like just new ideas coming from all those ideation process. Yeah, I think that is very special and unique. Mm. Is, it, is it very difficult for you to talk to your peer students 
coming from very different background? Uh, not really. I think like people are really nice here and welcome <laughs> to help each other. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Great. Um, is, is the place something that as expected or was it very different from your expectation? Um, it's a little bit overwhelming <laughs> for me. <laughs> Are you getting used to it? Yeah, I really like it. Good, thank you. So, Ragna, how about you? Mm, right, yeah, I think one of the key aspects of KMD um, is what um, Elizabeth just said. Um, it's really cool that so many people of different disciplines um, come together at KMD. And I think one of the most outstanding aspects about KMD to me personally is that it's, of course, also about academic research, but it's also very hands-on and about actually building things, which um, was really attractive to me, um, which I think, yeah, that's like one of the um, major aspects of KMD that I really, really love. It's, it's, so it's the place... Um as expected, um, or was it a bit different from your ex initial expectation? Um, going into KMD, I, at first, I was a little bit worried that maybe um, the program would be very rigid and it would be like um, a little bit too harsh of a structure. Um, but after joining KMD and being here for like three semesters now, um, I'm very happy that it's actually the opposite. Like it's really, really open. And if you have a particular research goal in your mind, I think it's a really, really great space to very freely explore um, what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So we're currently in a very um, interesting time in the history, um, was like a tipping point of one um, sort of valued society to coming up with a, a yet another one. And right, we are in the right middle of the transition. And hence, um, all the activities are basically online. Uh, we are allowing students to use the facility uh, per reservation. And we make sure the social distancing and all the other measures are going to be in place for safety. Um, so you have much less uh, touch points with other peer students or even faculties uh, doing things in physical space, but more doing so from your from your home and with things that you have um, in your apartment. Uh, how do you see this uh, big transition? And um, are you struggling, or do you see this also as an opportunity for you to grow? Ragna. Um, yeah. So. I think, um, of course, it's an opportunity to grow. I think it's a good opportunity to um, explore certain kind of technologies that enable people to communicate with each other in new ways where maybe we don't have to be in the exact same place at the same moment, which I think specifically in embodied media, we have a lot of um, previous research in these areas, um, like about um, tele-existence, telepresence, um, and also more recent student projects um, are tackling these issues. So I think from that angle, it's a, yeah, it's a really good opportunity um, to delve into these kind of aspects of how technology can maybe shape our future communications or how it can improve um, our work life or everyday life if we have to be stuck at home all day. Do, do, you, do you have some struggle and pain points on the other hand? Um, yeah, I mean, of course, um, at the end of the day, um, I think it's great to also be able to meet other people um, in person always. So I think um, technology will never replace these aspects. Um, so of course, I think um, we're living in the middle of a pandemic. And of course, that's a struggle, I guess, to everyone to some extent. But um, I think it brings a lot of creative opportunities if you are... Um, curious about tackling these issues. Mm, yeah, yeah, I agree. Elizabeth, how about you? Um, I think I am more old school than right now. So I am one of those students who goes to school every day, even until now. Yeah, it's just because I really like to interact with people. And it is because I go to school every day, I still get to meet a lot of students there and even some of the M1 students there. So I think it's really great for me to um, keep it old school style and then just 
stay in the hacking studio. Well, so you're making reservation every day and then make sure you get the slot? <laughs> yeah, kind of. I already made reservations for next Monday. <laughs> I see. Okay, so you do you do get the opportunity to use the facility, and then, um, but it's not like um, before COVID that you still have to make reservation, and there are only a handful of students um, on campus at KMD, so you have very limited amount of um, interaction with students. Um, how, what do you do when you're not on campus? Uh, what do I do when I'm not on campus? I you have lots of meetings uh, with Minamita Sensei on Zoom. So, um, um. Yeah, I have a lot of meetings with Minamita Sensei on Zoom, and um, I think I'm pretty much on campus every day. Like even when I'm not in Kyoshi, sometimes I'm in Takeshiba. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think um, most of the um, KMD professors are super busy and it's um, in general very difficult to uh, find a physical touch point, um, especially when it was pre-COVID. Um, one year ago, uh, all the students have to make reservation to make appointments and then trying to find um, a slot. But I think Minamiza Sensei, because he's doing things more online, um, he may have more time with you. Is that true or not? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I think that is actually true because like uh, we experienced our first semester um, before the COVID, which is very lucky for us. And at the time, I remember when we just entered KMD, like during that info session, there was one particular slide teaches you how to catch professors <laughs> yeah and um, yeah I imagine at that time it was much more challenging to catch Minami Dawa on campus but now things were on zoom and slack all the time it's easier for communication yeah <laughs> definitely slack that when you post something people will reply that's very true yeah so before COVID, uh, we didn't have that kind of um, communication platform. And so you really have to struggle to to grab um, Namita Sensei's time. Yeah. <laughs> so Namita Sensei, what about you? How do you see the difference between um, before COVID and, and currently during the pandemic and then maybe towards post pandemic? Yeah, so yeah, as, as, as Ragnar said, so we, we have, a lot of research is about kind of a digital communication and using virtual environment or robotics. So we have researched that how we can communicate in the distance. But uh, yeah, I, we, we found that, that in this pandemic, so we found that so the, yeah, this is not a chance, but the, this is the kind of the, our mission is to actually spread the technology we have to the society. So yeah then we actually initially we started to explore how we can transfer for example the, how we can transfer the haptic sensation the sense of touch in the this kind of the zoom or the kind of online platform so then we are making this kind of the new platform that can deliver the sense of the kind of the existing of the other the people, even in this kind of digital platform. So then we yeah, are now challenging that how we can recreate the social communication, more like a more, a more kind of empathic kind of communication. But yeah, on the other hand, we also found that so the, yeah, this is not everything could be solved by the technology. The, we also need to think about, so why we would like to meet together, why we'd like to hug, or why we'd like to shake hands. So yeah, this kind of the skin hunger becomes a very big social issue now. So then we are think, start, starting to think about, yeah, how, why, why we communicate, or why we would like to meet together and uh, try to explore a new new way of the yeah human communities yeah so yeah this is there's many type of the things that we need to 
think about. But it was really yeah, good opportunity for even for me to think about that kind of thing, considering that kind of things. Because in the previous years, we actually do a lot of project, but not much time to deeply consider that kind of a why. So, but yeah, this is a very good opportunity for me to consider that. Then I also starting to plan the new kind of a project for the next five years, 10 years, which is called Moonshot Project in Japan. So yeah, I did have a chance to yeah create a new type of the research kind of proposals. Yeah, speaking of Moonshot, the, the word itself um, was starting to spread out in 19... 19- early 1950s mm, mm. by J.F. Kennedy, when he committed to do the um, uh, moon um, exploration. And within a decade, so with, um, and then they actually made it to the moon in, um, in 1969. And you have to make a big de- declaration first and envision the future. And then we figure out how to get there. Mm. And so I hope um, your moonshot project will do the same. You have a yeah. uh, grand plan, and we'll, you figure out through research how to how you your idea can be reached and be part of our society. Mm. Yeah, that's great. So let's let's talk about more about embodied media specifically. Yep. So um, can you make a, a brief introduction of what embodied media project is about? Yes. So we embodied media project. It's uh, exploring the new potential of the technology that can change the human behaviors or hu- and human cognitions. So the, we are trying to kind of enhance or empower the human being and also the uh, enchant our, the, our environment and also the make create a new kind of the uh, empathic communication uh, among the people or between human being and also the ex- that kind of the environment. So maybe I'd like to show some video that introducing our project more with more like a visualized materials. Mm-hmm. Can I start? Yep. Okay. So please show this three minutes video. Yeah, there's actually diverse type of project. Some project is more focused on the technology itself, but also we have many projects which is focused on the experience and design and also the social access, uh, social aspect of the research. So we explore how we can create the haptic sensations or ex- communicating with the kind of sense of touch. And also the year in this COVID situation, we are really exploring how we can deliver that kind of sensation in the, on the internet. And we are trying to expand our bodies and empower ourselves. So this is kind of the sad hand project that you can get two more kind of a hand. Even that kind of a technology can be yeah, embedded with the kind of a welfare technologies. And also even you can have the tail. Then we are recently starting to explore how we can change the environment, how we can create new type of the special interaction between space and us. So because there's a lot of kind of technology like XR or augmented realities. So we are thinking about how we can live both in the physical world and digital world. And also we are yeah really interested in how we can deliver the kind of a more better society. So we are collaborating with the people with disabilities or elderly people or child to deliver our kind of technology to change their life. 
And also this project, so we are also collaborating with the kind of the creators and the performers to explore a new potential kind of expression. So this is the yeah, COVID related project that we are also changing the online live performances. And uh, yeah, to deliver this technology and also to communicate and collaborate with the lot of stakeholders, we also building the community of the kind of the external designers and also the companies. Yeah, this kind of thing is something we cannot do now, but uh, we had a lot of kind of uh, exhibitions to the outside. I hope we are, yeah, we can also do this kind of the uh, exhibitions again in the next year. That's it. Thank you. Very impressive video. Um, I, I particularly liked the um, the segment about the during the so, social distancing um, and pandemic that we are isolated and you, your projects are still ongoing. And um, I hope this this will continue in, in a good way that we can still do regardless of uh, public facilities, we can develop things at home mm -hmm. um, or anywhere, wherever you are. Yeah, actually we, in the, initial kind of period of pandemic. So we delivered 3D printers to the student home. So yeah, now that this kind of the technology to build something is very kind of like common. So yeah, we can, yeah, we have uh, several kind of options to do that at even in your home. Yeah, I, I think this kind of um, technology normally requires a special equipment with um, and then sp special facility like a um, studio environment and um, able to access that becomes a value or privilege. But I think in the long run, um, everyone will be uh, equipped with this kind of a creative um, tool set at home or mm -hmm. in, the, in the neighborhood. So um, people have um, access to, regardless of whether you are not part of the mm -hmm. in big institution. Um, and I hope this will be uh, part of um, our new normal society. Mm -hmm. Anyway, great. So, um, Ragnar, you mentioned you are almost um, one one semester away from graduation. <laughs> so, what kind of projects are you working on? Um, I'm currently working on um, a robotic experience, um, a playful experience with a social robot, where. Um, people can play with a robot and have to take care of it similar to um, a sort of Tamagotchi, you could say. And the concept is that um, people in remote locations can play with this robot and interact with this robot. So, and through this robot, people can maybe feel the presence of each other. It's like people in very many different locations take care of the same pet. Hmm, interesting, wow. So it's perfect uh, project for this kind of a um, pandemic times. Yeah, I was definitely inspired by it. Great. By the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So how, how do you build these prototypes? Uh, I'm doing my um, research in collaboration with another company. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually not um, actively involved in the production of the robot. I'm involved more on the software side of things. I see, I see. And um, several sensing applications. Mm -hmm. And are you planning to build multiple um, prototypes and then distribute it to people um, located remotely so that you can actually see whether this works? Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be the plan. That's great, yeah. All right, um, what kind of um, student life um, are you, what is the time management? If you are engaged in projects and then um, lots of courses at KMD, uh, do you get to do other things over the weekend or are you mostly devoting your time to KMD activities or embodied media projects activities? Um, yeah, maybe I can start. 
Um, okay. So I made the decision to take um, most of the preliminary courses in my first two semesters so that I can very freely now focus on my um, master's research project, mm -hmm. um, which I think was a good decision. Um, so I dedicate a lot of my time towards this project currently. Um, the great thing, um, probably also because due to the pandemic now, a lot of things are remote. The great thing is that um, doing this, we can very freely um, organize our time which leaves us with a lot of opportunities to maybe go on shorter trips um, somewhere to other places, um, of course, in accordance with um, safety precautions. Um, and especially the great thing is that um, by being able to separate your time by yourself, you don't necessarily have to visit um, places on the weekends where there's a lot of people anyway. So the great thing is that you can maybe go on a weekday, for example. Um, so this kind of flexibility has been really great actually for the past um, semester so far and very useful. So you're, you're good at managing time then. <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe a little bit. Okay, so Elizabeth, how about you? What kind of projects are you working on? Hi, my personal research is about using eye movement control to um, to control robotics and then assist people with disabilities. Yeah, and other than that, I am working on a new collaborative projects EM just got recently. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you already said that you are almost um, using the phys uh, physical space yeah. uh, weekly or daily. Um, How's your time management skill in terms of, um, are you overwhelmed with time? Are you devoting your entire time to KMD or do you have other things to do? Um, I think as Ragnar just mentioned that like this pandemic actu actually give us more flexibility on time management. And so like for me, um, I am more of a workaholic type of person so like I prefer to work a lot because I really like it yeah so like um I prefer to spend a lot of time on projects and then my personal research yeah mm -hmm. so if you recall um the first semester uh, which was before pandemic um there was a fundamental course called pipeline and the first semester how was your first semester was it overwhelming um because you have to commute to school and then there were lots of uh, collaborative uh, assignments um, to do and might be very time consuming. How, how was your first semester? Uh, my first semester indeed was like really overwhelming because of the commute time. Mm -hmm. um, at that time I was also like doing an internship. So like um, I would, because I live in Tokyo, so like I would go to school in the morning and then go back to work in Tokyo in the afternoon. And then because of like the intensity of pipeline too. So I sometimes have to go back to school again after my work. So like I would spend four hours on commuting a day, which is really, um, I think it's like a waste of time. And I used to be sleeping on the train sometimes, <laughs> doing my makeups on it. That's, yeah. that's very uh, typical Japanese. <laughs> We sleep on on the train. Yeah, so um, the COVID uh, allowed us to have less commute <laughs> and that makes um, makes your time more flexible. That, yeah, that's very true. Uh, Minamiza Sensei used to um, hop around between um, his satellites um, lab space in Tokyo, come to KMD in Hiyoshi and then go to another satellite uh, lab locations um, um, almost every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was almost commuting and train, taking the train rides. Yeah, actually, <laughs> that's true oh, that. To just switch from one Zoom session to another. <laughs> actually, I also have an experience when I injured my leg. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah, three years before, so I injured my leg and uh, I kind of uh, work from home for two months that, at that time. So we, because we are doing this kind of research, we had uh, telepresence robots in our kind of laboratories. Then 
I tried to use the robot for actually for two months. Then I realized that, oh, it is maybe new type of the kind of the working style that staying physically in home, but uh, hopping several kind of the facilities to communicate with the students. So yeah, actually now that is actually now in the realistic kind of the things that that we can now 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 the even I'm going uh, hoping to the laboratory is there's no no students there but the, we had more kind of flexibility but on the other hand on the other hand we lose the opportunities to move our bodies. So I think that is becoming also the social problem that everyone must, especially for the elderly, so everyone cannot go around and their physical abilities are getting worse and worse. So like, uh, what we need to think about is how we can kind of the, yeah, how we can kind of keep this flexibility, but also keep our kind of a healthy health kind of a exercise or healthy life that is yeah something that we need for the post kind of a pandemic mm, that's that's very true um i try to make um 20 30 minutes work mm -hmm. as much as i can because i have i don't have any commute time so i can make um use that time to to do a little bit of physical exercise mm. um how about um, two students? Uh, are you doing physical exercise or are you stuck in your own apartment? <laughs> a little bit. Uh, you're, you're commuting, so you're okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Ragnar, you are, you are stuck in your own space, right? Yeah, I do spend a lot of um, time in my own room, but I um, do go um, to the gym still and I try to um, go on walks whenever I can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, think I think it's very important um, to go outside um, regularly mm. as much as you can. I think I, I became more conscious about my own health mm -hmm. of this. Um, not 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 to be infected, but also how to um, maintain your own body. Yeah, so I think it's it allowed us to stop and think about what's more important for you. How can we do it better um, because when before pandemic, um, I was also super busy and then just following um, appointments after appointments <laughs> and not even think about why or uh, <laughs> what, waste, wasted um, commute time or not is was not an issue. That's, that's also already a given um, expectation. But now that we have time to think, is it really necessary? Can we do it differently? Um, is really a, a important challenge for um, the time, which leads us to uh, the, the idea of moonshot. So mm -hmm. maybe Minamura can say, what is the moonshot project that you're going to work on? Yeah, the our moonshot project is the kind of like we call cybernetic being project, which is exploring how our human being or human kind of the existing can be enhanced in the future with this kind of technologies. So. We think that initially the, the, the com, com, in the conventional society, we thought that we are, we have one body. Individuals have one body, one name, one and, and one identity, but it's starting to change because if you have several kind of Twitter account, Facebook account and uh, in, Instagram account, I think you, you, your characteristics in the different communities different. You, you have multiple, multiple individual or multiple identity in your, in your body. So also then now the technology make it possible to have another body, like a telegram robots or that kind of uh, human augmentation technology allow us to have the another kind of the body, the physical robot, even physical robot or virtual robots. You have multiple of the uh, kind of, you have yeah, I'll kind of your your surrogate or your uh, avatars. So then, how about the with having this kind of a multiple identity and multiple bodies? 
how our ourself will be changed or how our brain will be changed and how our society will be changed. That is the yeah our key concept of the moonshot. So we will explore not only the technology but also the our kind of the brain and also our society. How we can design the new social rules or new ethics with that kind of the technology in the future. Yeah, yeah. that is our moonshot project. That that's very important, especially um, many of the academic research uh, tends to focus on one discipline. Mm -hmm. um, if it's engineering project, then um, obviously to, the mission is mm -hmm. to um, come up with a cutting edge um, engineering solution for the next generation. But um, the question is, why are we doing this kind of academic research? Yeah. yeah. And ultimate goal is to make use of the um, outcome to make a better, better future. Mm. So um, this moonshot project of looking into this um, societal part, mm -hmm. um, ethics, but also the entire rule set and how to build a much desirable community yeah. is very important. And I think it matches with KMD's interest. Um, yeah, this is actually what I have learned <laughs> from KMD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then actually this is very kind of a, one, one of my kind of a 10 years kind of the outcomes that what I myself could learn from KMD as a professor faculty mm -hmm. and, and also what I have learned from the students. Then, yeah, this is one of the very kind of crystal of this kind of experiences for these 10 years. So it's just starting yes. and for another five years. The next five years will be achieving the moonshot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so um, Ratna and Elizabeth, maybe I can ask you um, a simple question. So th looking at this kind of moonshot-like project that has um, different lenses of disciplines coming together, um, maybe you can share um, your initial background when you joined KMD and um, how you changed yourself by immersing yourself in this kind of very diverse and dynamic environment. Maybe I can start with Elizabeth. Uh, okay, so my initial background was in economics with a focus on econometrics. So it's more on the data science side rather than um, engineering side. And then actually I finished my undergrad degree in three years. And because I entered university earlier than others. So like when I graduated, I was like just turned 21. And at that time I was really frustrated. I didn't know what I want to do. And then I came to KMD. And when I like during the pipeline classes, I found that I was actually really interested in getting my hands onto stuff. Like Arduino sets, that kind of things. And I really like hardware. So then I was like, oh, maybe this is something I can do. And this is something mm -hmm. I'm really interested in too. And then, yeah, I just feel very blessed that we have like embodied media. This is a really good platform for me to um, like explore my infinities here. So you're picking up um, your hard and soft skills around um, digital technology yeah. on the way. Yes. Great. And what was it very difficult for you to um, immerse yourself in technology kind of um, disciplines? Um, not really, because like uh, in undergrad degree, because I was focusing on data science, I did a little bit about um, our language programming. Mm -hmm. So like it was comparatively easy for me to get my hands on the stuff. Mm -hmm. and. Also, the research I'm working on right now, um, I need to do a lot of data analysis on iMovie. <laughs> yes, no. yeah, and actually, yesterday, I was still talking to Professor Kai um, from Geist. And he actually told me that like the blink rate, the average blink rate for people who speak different languages is different. So like we have a Japanese database, we have a Chinese speaking that of us and then like German speaking uh, and this kind of things is kind of related to my undergrad degree but since I'm applying this like this um, knowledge to my uh, master degree researches I think it's really good yeah, so it's a combination. Wow that's that's very interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ragna, um, what about you? What kind of background did you have um, prior to KMD? And um, now you're working on lots of robots um, like Elizabeth. Uh, so it's very engineering centric. Right. Um, my background is in game design. Um, I was working as a game designer before joining KMD. And um, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the work. Um, but I kind of wanted to explore more varied ways of how we can play with technology. Um, that was my motivation for joining um, Embodied Media. And eventually this journey has led me to the project I'm working on right now, which involves playing with robots, like um, playful experiences for humans and robots. And um, I was lucky in that sense in that I already had um, programming experience before joining KMD. So I could uh, build on top of that. And that was certainly really useful, but I did not have any um, actual engineering or electronics background. Um, so when it comes to these things, I think um, prototyping with Arduinos, like with microcontrollers and building these kind of setups, um, that's a very essential skill to have. But I think the great thing is, even though it looks intimidating from the outside, um, because the KMD course is very, very hands-on, you very quickly realize that it's actually not rocket science. It's actually not that hard to program a small computer and make some LEDs blink or to make a motor go around um, these kind of things. Um, so that was, um, especially in the first semester, that was, I felt really accomplished after like building my first real <laughs> Arduino prototypes. And it was actually much um, easier than I thought at first. Mm -hmm. So you come from design, game design background, and then you're picking up this digital technology aspects um, during the fundamental um, classes. Um, how about some courses related to policies that looks at more social impact? Mm, right. Um, personally, I believe um, that as a society, we nowadays we already play more than we used to play in the past. Um, and I believe that in the future, we will um, have even more time to play, not necessarily video games, but um, all different kinds of play as we have robots or machines to produce the things that we need to survive. We have more time that we can um, enjoy playing um, whatever these modes of play will be. So I think I like this um, holistic view of technology that KMD can provide in a certain extent because we also have policy classes and these kind of things. So it's really cool to be able to contextualize the technology that you're working on and see how it might have an impact on society as a whole. And I think that's great because um, as a creator, as someone who builds technology, we also need to be responsible for what kind of impact our technologies will have on society. Yeah, yeah. Um, KMD is really serious about um, trying to think about how, how our activities can translate into making the society better. And, and that requires a holistic view or different lenses to be blended in, in understanding what the society wants or how we believe society can benefit from our ideas rather than just uh, from your pure interest in, in engineering. Yeah, great. Minami um, Jasensei, so you all as a faculty is um, expected to teach and prepare students for okay. all these activities on, on real projects. Uh, you, you need to um, explain the basics of say interactive technology to students from very different background some students might be allergic or be very uh, um, frightened about, oh, I don't know about technology, I've never touched this. Um, how do you interact with those students? Yeah, so the, I think that, as Laguna said, the very important thing is that not think too much, kind of too difficult. So the, it's important to kind of start and it's important to try and uh, try to make something. It's it's okay to just it's failure. It's fine. But the uh, the experience of the building something is very important to understand 
how it works or how it's difficult, how it's easy. So then I, I'm trying to um, suggest the student to, okay, that idea is interesting. So then make it faster, make, make it kind of a, the make a prototype, the even, even the kind of very dirty, that's fine. But uh, try to make it and try to experience it by yourself. The, then you can understand, or oh, it's actually kind of a beneficial, or it's actually interesting or not. So the experience makes, the prototype makes experience and experience makes the kind of next step idea. I think that kind of the atmosphere is very important. And uh, yeah, before COVID that was relatively easy to do that because the, we have a more like a shared experiences all together and we could have a physical space that share this kind of atmosphere. But the, during the COVID, so in the, I think the first kind of the six, seven months, we are a little bit struggle about that, the how we can deliver this kind of the atmosphere to the new students. So the Ragnar and Elizabeth already kind of felt that, that atmosphere before the COVID, but for the new students, it was really difficult to feel and to, to start challenging that their prototyping. Then now it's starting to work that they are starting to yeah make something based on their idea. But uh, maybe we need more kind of the yeah, more some kind of a new uh, idea that how we can engage the new students to start building things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very that's very true. So we learned over the six seven months uh, things that works well um, by online activities and things that very difficult to achieve um, by online and much better to do it physically. And we also learned uh, some of the physical activities that we've been doing before COVID. Um, might be not the best way. <laughs> we thought that was the way to do it, but maybe um, an online option would be um, a better solution for some of the activities. Mm -hmm. that we're doing. Yeah. So I think we now understand what's the strengths of physical space and what's the strengths of the virtual space. Mm -hmm. And so we are in the true um, cyber physical uh, society. Yeah. And how to balance this um, into the future is really important. Thank you. So um, our time is getting close um, to the end, but uh, we have a final section about the Q&A. Let me read out um, some of the questions that's in front of me. Um, it's not too late for you to type in questions if you have some uh, questions for us to answer you. Um, all right, so the first one is, how would KMD preparing to deal with the pandemic in the academic year 2021? Uh, will it be online um, or will it be hybrid or will it be in person? Okay, so the answer is, um, unfortunately, um, in the greater Tokyo area, the government of Japan decided to extend the State of Emergency Act. Um, so we are still um, struggling um, to overcome this pandemic. And because of this, uh, we also understand we have many, many international students, about 60% uh, represent internationally. And many of the students are not able to uh, fly into Japan because of the travel ban. So um, we will continue um, our courses online as a default. And however, we also learned there are some things that we really want to do it in the physical environment. Uh, we try to embed some of the uh, physical sessions if the situation allows. So in such a case, uh, students are welcome to come to campus and uh, be part of this physical experience. Of course, there are some students who might not feel um, uh, comfortable in coming to campus. So we always will have an option of joining remotely online. So this hybrid approach will be part of the next um, few years of KMD um, academic um, offering. I think we'll continue with online offering regardless uh, we'll try to bring in more physical touch points whenever we can think that it's more beneficial. But even with that kind of a physical sessions, we will allow students to participate online as well. 
So that's our hope. Um, and the balance, hopefully, uh, as the pandemic is fading out, uh, we will try to seek more opportunities to um, do more things on, on, the, on campus or physical space. So that's the answer. Um, second question, do you have any advice about how to prepare to join Embodied Media Project? Are there any pre-required skills? Um, so this can be answered by uh, three members of Embodied Media. Maybe we can start from Kota-sensei. Yeah, that is actually a frequently asked question, but so the we always welcome any kind of the students that even you have the technical back, background or not, because the, as the as a students already explained, so this is not the place that the only the kind of the technical geek is listening, that uh, because the the collaboration of the different kind of disciplines is very important, as we said. And also that we also really welcome the skill that you have like uh, your design skill or your uh, your kind of the uh, background of the policy or economics that is, or maybe psychology or even medical kind of background, any kind of background, it's a very kind of a essential so if you can think about how the how your vision can be created with combination of the technology and in many kind of things, so then yeah, we we welcome all kind of the students. And the actually regarding the technologies, it's in the current kind of era, it is really easy to start. It, it's really easy to run. You don't need to so much kind of the afraid about the technologies. You can get that kind of skill very easily. Thank you. Um, maybe Elizabeth, um, do, you, do you think um, any pre-required skills would help or any, any background student can just jump in? I think it is more about a personal interest. Like as long as you're interested in exploring technology and try to combine it with your previous um, experiences, then it's fine. Like, I think I am an example. Yeah, I agree. So any, um, not only embodied media, but I think KMD um, students bring in their own expertise on board. And that um, expertise with the, um, wherever you go in real project activities, uh, can mix and mendle, um, mingled and make it a strong project. So if we have all engineering based students, then all we can think of is advanced engineering perspective of research. But if we have um, students from say like Wagner, your game design and, and trying to integrate with remote collaboration of tactile sensation, maybe you have a new game. Um, so this kind of um, connecting the dots is really the key of innovation um, and Within KMD, that's why we want to make the community very diverse. Um, as, so as you said, uh, your background with uh, of data science and then what you do um, at Embodied Media makes sense to, to strengthen yourself and also the project makes it very interesting. Ragnar, do you agree? Hmm? Sorry? Do you, do you agree that um, yeah. this diversity is very important and you, Whatever skills um, stu uh, applicants have, uh, they, they, as long as you have something. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think um, it can be easily seen also on the website where there's a demo of the previous Embodied Media project. Like um, they are very, very diverse. And I think no matter what your background is, um, you can definitely build on top of your background if you, um, join KMD and that's the great thing. I mean, of course, if you don't have any technical background, that's a skill that probably you will need to learn, mm -hmm. but it's definitely something that you can probably learn quicker than you think right now. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have it yet. Right, so Minamita Sensei, um, during the um, introduction of Embodied Media, you showed a three minute video and then in that video, there was a dance performance. Yeah. Project. So maybe you can explain. So I, my understanding is that project was led or co-led by um, previous master students who was yeah. a 
who That's was the dancer, yeah. yeah. So yeah, because uh, she, she's a dancer and she would like to, uh, she, after joining a body media, so we discuss about how that, what is a future dance, future performance. Then we, the, based on the kind of the discussion, we launched the project and we got also a lot of help from the Geist project, which is led by Professor Kai, because they have a lot of kind of the sensing technologies of the human kind of the emotion. Then also from our side, there's a, a music, there's the, the student from the music design and also the writing design and also the uh, the guy who grabbed the game also, another guy who grabbed the game, also joining the project. And uh, yeah, a lot of kind of creativity from various disciplines like uh, performance, music, sound, and technology and sensing are kind of like combined all together. Yeah, this kind of the, the more, most important things that is what is your passion and what kind of the future you would like to achieve. Then, yeah, the Embodied Media, not only Embodied Media, but KMD can support and collaborate with you that to, to achieve your kind of the vision. Great, thank you. So um, we're very close to the ending. Uh, maybe um, a very simple um, advice or uh, words from each one of you towards the audience um, so that they can re really seriously think about um, KMD as a destination for their uh, next career path. So um, maybe I can ask from uh, Ragnar this time. Mm, yeah, I think if you have a rough vision of what you want to do, um, and you are excited about learning new things and you want to make something maybe that's hands-on, um, I think then KMD has really, really good opportunities um, to pursue these kind of things. Um, yeah. Great, thank you, cool. All right, Elizabeth? Um, just don't worry too much about the te technical part and come to have some fun with us, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you, great. and. Kota-sensei? Yeah, so let's create the future together. So if you start, if you join, so we can do it. Yes. So um, I hope we have convinced uh, you that KMD is first of all very unique um, as a community and a place to do things. So we are co-designing and um, the future together. So if you have a um, visioned future, that you want to be a part of, then you can act now at KMD. So thank you very much for joining and I hope uh, we are able to meet you in person in the future. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>